This is a glow plug. Now I can't think of something more singularly useful to be given. They usually come in sets of four, obviously, and I've been given three by my friends at Canterbury Automotive, so clearly one was broken and they replaced the set. But they're about three pounds each, so incredibly cheap. Because they're made for automotive, of course, they are beautifully made. I mean, there's a central ceramic portion here. You have to be careful of not breaking. And that's really just dropping it on the floor. If you do that, it'll crack the ceramic. But the tip here is made to stand up to an incredibly corrosive environment that is the inside of a combustion cylinder. So quite often you find these coated in some exotic materials like platinum and iridium. I don't know what these are coated with, but they're built to last. Now all we have to do is attach a handle of some description so we can hold it and a couple of contact points because these are meant to be worked on 12 volts. Now we put, could put some control electronics or we could just control it by voltage because the heat that that's going to get is going to be dependent on the voltage you put through. So 2, 4, 6, 9, 12 volts is going to be just Jim Dandy and of course that makes it portable because if we use a 6, 9 or 12 volt battery with this we have ourselves a portable heating appliance. Now I'm going to make a portable soldering iron out of this and I have a couple of other ideas but if anybody else has got loads of good ideas I certainly will be pleased to hear from them and we'll see what we can come up with. And there's only one really unfortunate thing about it and that's that. That machine thread is meant to go into an engine block and it would be jolly handy if we could make it go into a normal M10 bolt. So I did exactly that. I took one of these tap sets, that's an M10 tap, uh, and it's the, from the thing that you can get from the local DIY store, so a standard bolt tap, which is 1.5 by M10. And I re-threaded that, which is an absolute piece of cake, and I re-threaded that so I can get an M10 bolt on it. So if we put an M10 bolt on the end there, a couple of washers, and another M10 bolt, we have our negative contact point. You just jam the wire in there, tighten those bolts up, and there's your negative point made. Now we need a positive contact point, and I've mentioned these things a lot. They're at terminal blocks, they're brass, and they come in a variety of ampage, 3, 5, uh, 30, and then up. The 3, 5, and 30 amps are the really most common. They're a bit of plastic, you slice open the plastic, and you can take out the brass terminal block connector. As it happens, <laughs> this is just like it's a gift. It slots straight on there. So now we have our positive connection. Looking for a screwdriver. <coughs> so we have our positive and our negative. Of course we could do with the handle. What I've got here is a bit of fire brick left over from the kiln build. Remember when we built a kiln? And it's obviously a bit of ceramic and I've drilled a nine millimeter hole down the center of there and <laughs> guess what? That fits down that 9mm hole. So now I've got something to hold on to that is incredibly insulating and I'm not, not going to get burnt. Uh, I want to make it a soldering iron. Making it a soldering iron means I've got to put something on that tip that will accept the solder. And of course what we want really is a bit of copper. Copper will do wonderfully. And what I have here are some copper nails. So if I cut that section off I'm going to have myself a soldering tip. And if I use a 3 amp terminal block, there we go, there is my solder tip, and I can just shove that on there. And we have our soldering iron. How easy was that? It's a few bits and pieces thrown together to make a battery portable soldering iron. So let me give you a close-up of that. There's my terminal block, which is the 5 amp version, on the end of the glow plug. There's the ceramic in the glow plug, there's the body of the glow plug, there's a 3 amp terminal block there holding a copper nail against the actual bit that heats up. You see I've put a wire into this terminal block and I've put a wire around there between those two M10s and tightened it down and there's my ceramic blanket. Now I used that because I had it but you could equally get this stuff which is a um, sealant actually, a high temperature sealant that dries and goes hard and it's good up to 1200 degrees centigrade. So if you don't happen to have one of them Use that and just gun it around and smooth it out until it's a, a handle that you like. So here's my portable battery controlled soldering iron. Now I put a bit of Kapton tape on there, that's good up to 400 degrees centigrade. It's on 4 volts, so it's just a 4 volt uh, current going through there. And it's surprising how low this will work, it heats up extraordinarily quickly at 6 volts. My 4 volts is enough 
to solder those two bits of wire together. There we go! <laughs> cool! <laughs> so making your own soldering arm from a glove plug and a nail extraordinarily easy. Now this is controlled by voltage remember, so it, it would be a better job if you put a thermal cutout switch in there or you put some kind of selector switch where you could have thermal cutout. Um, but this is rough and ready and very easy to do and certainly does the job. Now it will get extraordinarily hot at 12 volts. Remember it's a glow plug, it's meant to glow. But at 3, 4 volts, you're going to be able to solder with it. And if you can have that as a battery powered little thing, I don't see why you wouldn't. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got some suggestions, please do make them. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.